Okay, now the topic of our discussion is analysis of beams and frames. Now, uh, we have to follow the same steps as we followed for the analysis of trusses, but now the only difference is the difference in their K matrix. For the trusses, we have one type of stiffness matrix and for beams we have another type of stiffness matrix. We have to follow again the same steps like here we are given this beam. Uh, this is a uh, one degree indeterminate beam. You can see that it is fixed here and have a roller support at mid span. And a one key point load is applied at node one. Right? Now uh, since this is an indeterminate beam, so we can analyze it using stiffness method. Again, we have, uh, first of all, we have to assign the nodal numbers. Uh, like you can see that it is node 1, then it is node 2, and then node 3. Okay. Uh, we are given uh, with the modulus of elasticity and moment of inertia of beam. Now, uh, there are two members involved in this beam, member 1, 2 or we can say member 1 simply, from 1 to 2 and from node 2 to 3 we have another member, I have named it as member 2. So now the K matrix for beam element is given by this formula e i over l cube into 12 6 l minus 12 6 l and so on so this is the general formula for member stiffness matrix of beam element now how you will label each column and each row uh, you can see that in a beam at node 1 there are two possible displacements one is uh, vertical displacement I name it as V1 because it is as at node 1 and in the vertical di direction another is horizontal uh, uh, another is rotation theta 1 right there will be a negligible horizontal displacement because axial deformations are very small and we neglect them so um, we don't consider that in calculations another possible displacement is at node 2 v2 and theta 2 right and similarly at node 3 we have v3 and then the rotation is named as theta 3 right so for element 1 2 uh, uh, you know l modulus of elasticity and moment of inertia so first of all calculate uh, this term which is e i or l cube so it is 2.6 kip per foot okay uh, now since these both the members are identical uh, member 1 to 2 and then 2 to 3 because you can see that it is of 20 foot length and the another one is also of 20 foot length so stiffness matrices for both the elements will be same if the these two members were different we have to calculate the stiffness matrix for each one separately right so after putting all the values in the stiffness matrix formula the stiffness matrix k12 is this now you can see that in k12 uh, we are concerned with v1 theta1 and v2 theta2 so you have to label it like v1 theta1 v2 and theta2 right so this is stiffness matrix for member 1 2 for member 
2 3 again put all the values in this formula and you will get a stiffness matrix uh, but now you have to label it as v2 theta2 v3 theta3 because you can see that from node 2 to 3 we have v2 and theta2 v3 and theta3 but uh, you have to know that the first column is related to the vertical displacement then second column is related to the rotation then the third column is related to vertical displacement and third is uh, again related to or fourth is again related to rotation okay so after calculating uh, after cal calculating member stiffness matrices now you can see that uh, because of this roller vertical displacement will be zero so i will say v2 is equal to zero and because of this fixed support vertical displacement v3 will be zero right also there is no rotation at the fixed end so rotation is zero so theta 3 is 0, v3 is 0 and v2 is also 0. The only unknown degrees of freedom are v1, theta 1 and theta 2. Right? So uh, again uh, when you uh, again since there are total possible degrees of freedoms are 6, v1, theta 1, v2, theta 2 and v3, theta 3 these are the possible degrees of freedom some of them are zero and some are non-zero so the global stiffness matrix or total stiffness matrix will be of the order of six by six and again when you uh, combining uh, you have to write v1 theta 1 v2 theta 2 v3 theta 3 six by six matrix then at the position uh, this position is v1 v1 because it is in the first row and in the first column so the position of this entry is v1 v1 so uh, you can see there is no v1 v1 present here but here in this matrix you can see that this entry is v1 v1 so you have to pick the value from this matrix and uh, you have to put it here in the total stiffness matrix again to write this value uh, this is this value is named as theta 1 v1 because it is in the theta 1 column and v1 row so it is named as theta 1 v1 so again uh, there is no theta 1 v1 present here but you can see that theta 1 v1 is 120 and is present in this matrix so you have to put uh, pick the value from this matrix and put it here <coughs> uh, in the similar way v2 v1 this entry is named as v2 and v1 because it is in the v2 column and v1 row again v2 v1 is not present here but is v2 v1 is present here so you have to pick the value from here now you have to put all these entries in the similar way some of them will be zero like why this is zero because v3 v1 is present in neither of the above matrices uh, this is uh, this entry is v3 v1 you can see there is no v3 v1 present here also there is no v3 v1 present here so for those entries which are not available in either of the above matrices for those you have to put zero like for this for this and so on you have to put all the values in a similar way now randomly uh, for let's say for the for this last entry which is named as theta 3 theta 3 okay, because it is in the theta 3 column and theta theta 3 row so theta 3 theta 3 is present here but is not present here so you have to pick the value from the second matrix and you have to put it here 
now we are selecting uh, like an entry which is let's say v2 uh, v2 theta 2 if i want to put an entry v2 theta 2 why it is zero randomly i have selected this entry uh, so this is v2 theta 2 you can see that v2 theta 2 here is plus 120 and in this v2 theta 2 is minus 120 so these two will when you add them they will cancel out each other and the resulting uh, resulting value here will be zero so you have to put all the values in a similar way some values will be the summation of uh, entries from member stiffness matrices and some values will be the value from a single stiffness matrix for a single member okay now you have to eliminate those rows and those columns in the global or total stiffness matrix which corresponds to zero displacements like we we have see here we saw here that v2 is zero vertically here v3 0 and theta 3 0 so you have to eliminate those rows and those columns which are corresponding to zero displacements so since v2 is zero you have to make this column zero also the v2 row zero again v3 zero so you have to eliminate this column and this row theta 3 0 so you have to eliminate this column and this row the only non-zero entries we left with are uh, uh, other than these uh, eliminating rows and columns so after uh, removing these rows and columns which I have eliminated the uh, I will left with this K matrix okay this is the K matrix after eliminating the non-zero displacements so this is the K matrix and uh, now these are the forces at different nodes you can see in the question in the question the force at node 1 is minus 1 keep it since it is downward so we will treat it as minus 1 and uh, there is no force at node 2 also there is no applied force at node 3 so uh, yeah, this is for node 1 minus 1 keep at node 2 no force 0 at node 3 no force this is the k global or total stiffness matrix after eliminating 0 uh, rows and columns and these are the non-zero uh, displacement v1 theta1 and theta2 so uh, in this equation uh, you can easily solve this matrix equation for the unknown displacement so after solving we will get the values of v1 theta1 and theta2 right so these are the values uh, now after getting these displacements uh, v1 theta1 and theta2 so after getting these displacements uh, now we can calculate member forces now for member forces what does it mean member forces mean that uh, we have split our beam into two or three members uh, like for this case we have split it into two members one two and two three so member forces in member 1 2 you will pick this is the k matrix for member 1 2 k 1 2 we have already calculated in the very first step and uh, uh, if this is v1 so uh, this value corresponds to this v1 and this corresponds to this theta 1 this corresponds to v2 and this value corresponds to theta 2 right so we have calculated in the previous step v1 
right we have already calculated so i have put v1 here uh, also we have calculated theta 1 we know that v2 is 0 if we go to the boundary condition and also we have calculated theta 2 now you have to add plus what is this this is fixed and forces this is fixed and forces what does it mean it means that uh, now for this particular beam we have no fixed and forces because fixed and forces will be there if some force is applied in the middle of a member so fixed and forces will be there if some force is applied in the middle or uh, in between the nodes like if you are putting some force here or a UDL partial UDL or a point load in between two nodes then there will be fixed and forces so for this particular case since there is no force present between the nodes so this vector will be zero fixed and forces will be zero right so after simplifying this we will get uh, this as the member and forces uh, at node one and node two we already have a minus one force here at node 2 this is the reaction All right this is not zero actually this is uh, plus one uh, yes because there is no moment here so it should be zero and this is one because there is upward force here and there is uh, counterclockwise moment so it is minus 20 